Hey everybody, it's me again and welcome to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different, but uh, I think there is a benefit to it. Uh, the uh, video is about how do we extract information um, uh, from images. In particular, what we're interested in, GPS data or metadata about images that have been taken using a smart device. Okay, so we will be using um, MATLAB for this purpose, and this is to help my daughter. She's doing a research on this. She's went on a field research trip, and then she could have taken some images. Then in her research, she wants to find out where all these images has been taken using an iPhone. All right, so before we get started, we will, I'll show you what we're talking about. When you take an image, there is information about an image called metadata. Okay, this is, you can, you have special apps that can give you, display this information. And this is what we are interested in. There is things like the GPS, longitude and latitude. Those are the important parts. And it tells you when it was located, when it was taken, the resolution, what, what device has taken it. So there's a lot of information. We're not interested in all of the information. We're just interested in this latitude and longitude. But if you want to get all this information, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so if we go back, no, I'm new to uh, my labs, but I, I, I've learned enough. You know, if you know a little bit of programming or if you know programming, you kind of know what you look for. So the problem is that she has a list of images. Here are, here's the list of images. And there could be more, a lot more than this. And she wants to get all the GPS data for all these images. Now, she figured it out to do it one by one, but to do it one by one is kind of cumbersome. But so maybe there is an automated process that you just tell it to run, and it goes to that folder that contains all these images and spits out all the GPS data. So I kind of broke down this into steps. First, you should be familiar with MATLAB. Okay, you need to be able to, you know, this is, you, this is, you should have some background on MATLAB and, and, and the programming, programming language in MATLAB, okay? So I'm assuming you know how to create a, a test, uh, like a program, I call it a test script, test M. If not, you just click on here, plus new, and then script, and then you can start typing and save it before you run it, okay? So what we have here, first, you wanna go to the folder that contains those images, all right? And I'm using a Mac here, so there is a Mac or a window, it's the same, you do CD, change directory, and then you give it the path, this is the path of what that folder, where that folder is. How do you know the path of this? You can just simply click on one of these images and then go to uh, show in Finder, Here's my finder. If you right click on any of these, you get property, get info, or in, in Word is properties. It shows you the location of it. Here is the location of this. So you can copy this, by the way. All you do is that select it, command copy, and then close it, close this, go back in here, and then I'm just gonna paste it here so you can see it. So here is my, here's the path of my images, my folder images, all right? So that's what this command is, does. It take you to that folder. Why? Because it contains the images. Now the second thing that you need to do, now you need, because you are in that folder, all you have to do is say, give me, issue a command called there or directory. The directory is actually a list of command is a, is a command that give you a list. A list of what you're filtering to give you only the images. Look, notice in this folder I have test2.m, I, I have two other files, dot and dot dot, those are directory references. But what I'm interested in, only these images. So you can do filters. If you're interested in a particular na name, you can just put an, uh, a start at the beginning. So this is called the wildcard dot jpeg it will give you every file that ends or has an extension of gpg jpeg all right now let me just run run it i'll show you what this 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 does so far so if i do this run here 
<coughs> go to editor and then do run. In here, in the workspace, you'll see that this is called list. If I click on list here, notice it has a structure. A structure means like it's, um, it's like uh, uh, a collection of values and attributes. A structure in this case has, if I click on it, double click on the structure, it'll open up for you and it'll give you all the attributes and their value. There is 11 rows and, and times one, okay? So here's my 11 rows, one structure, 11 rows in this structure. And I have, these are my fields. So the attribute name is name. There's a folder, there's a date, there's a byte, and there's the, the type of it, is it directory or not, and the date and time. What I'm interested in, I want to get these names. So I got the list of the names, and I got 11 of those. So that's good, all right? You can close it, close this and go back. Okay, we'll go back to test. So that's what this command does. It gives you a list of the files and their attributes. One of the attributes is their name. Now, you could have a hundred, uh, you can have a hundred uh, files, images. You can have thousands of images. You can have five images. You don't, I don't care how many images do I have. So what this command does, this size, it gives me the size or this, the size of the structure. Remember what was the structure? 11 and 1. If there's 20, it would be 20 and 1. So what this does, it will give me, M will contain how many files I have or how many rows I have. I don't care about the N. All I'm interested in right now is to get the number of rows, how many images I have. Why? I'll tell you why in a minute. So this will give me how many are actually in that directory. The next step to do is that you do is, I want to create a table. Why do I want to create a table? Because my table should contain the image name and the latitude and longitude. Once I create a table, I can copy it to a file, I can do many things with it. So I'm gonna introduce you to a table in a minute. So this command is creating a size. The size is, the number of files that we have and three why three because i want to i want the image name i want the uh, longitude i want the latitude if you want more information all you have to do is that change that and then change the table in a, in a minute like i show you all right the second part is that so after you create the size that all we were doing here only to create the structure to collect the inform that that contains the information from these in, in these images the table requires we said that we want to have a table 11 rows and three columns each column have to have a type and there are different data types one data type for example is string one data type is integer flow double now you can look at the MATLAB reference and determine what types you want in your table. But in my case, all we want is that the image name, the latitude and longitude. So this gives you the types. Now you need to give it a name. You need to give these columns names in that table. So image name, that's the first one. Latitude is the second one. And longitude is the third one. So I've created the structure that contains the names structure that contains the types and the size. These has to be the same numbers. So I have this would refer to this, this would refer to this, and this would refer to this, okay? Now the, to create a table, I called it T, the object name T, and then you issue a command table. This table requires some information from you. The size, the size that we said, SZ, Variable types, these are my variable types that I'm gonna store in that table. And the variable names, here's my variable names. All right, so those are my elements to create a table. Now there are different ways to create a table, but I wanna create a table that contains columns and rows and certain heading for these columns. Okay, so I'm, I'm forced to use this 
way of creating the table. Now the part that actually get the data and displays it. So all we've done, we got the we got the uh, we got the images. We got figured out how many there are in the how many images do we have. We created a table. Now we are ready to process these images and get the information from them. Now, in programming languages, there's something called loops or structures or whatever. I mean repetitions. So now I have something in, in MATLAB, there's something called for loop, a repetition. What does it do? I'm gonna repeat this from one, I'm gonna have an index called i, this i will repeat from one to the number of files. Remember what is m? m is the number of files here, okay? That's the number of files. So this will repeat, uh, this would repeat the, uh, this would repeat this code from here to here, depending on how many images you have in that file, in that directory, images directory. So the first thing I did, you know, you don't need this, but <laughs> all I did here is to just to make sure that I am getting the right image. So this will display the image name. This will give you, I'm storing it, instead of repeating it over and over again, I'm just storing it in a variable called image name. You don't have to do that, but this is like, a, I don't have to type in list I that mean. What this does, display, it's display, basically display on the console here, the output, the command a window. List I, here is list I, here is list. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is my list. If it opens, do you see this? Every row has a unique index, okay? I have 11, so from one to 11. All right, so I will have from one to 11, okay? So, and to get the attribute, I say, I use this list one, for example, and then the image name, the name, that will give you the image name. So if I go back, if we go back to the editor test, so what this is giving you, you're accessing, I will be first one, I, list one dot name so we'll give you the first image name which would be this one image zero 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 jpeg and if you notice uh, let me run it again it depends on how they are sorted okay if they are sorted alphabetically so this is giving you because sorting alphabetically it will give you this here all right uh, and then the next so this will give you the image name Next thing we need to do is that I need to get information. This is how you get the meta metadata. The metadata is what is the inform all the information about that image. So if I look at this info, here is my metadata. There's a lot of information where it is stored, when it was when it was modified, the size, the type, JPEG, the width of it, the depth, and there's a lot more. And I want what do I want? I want GPS info. If I click on that, the GPS info, now I got access to all this information. So this is my GPS info. So if I want GPS info, I will use that GP info, that GPS info, and that will give you the GPS info. Is that clear? All right. So if I go back to that program, this will give you the GPS info. So if, to access the GPS info, you'll have to use dot gps info all right now to store to get the latitude you will say and i don't you don't need this by the way all you have to do is just say info dot gps info dot gps latitude and that will give you the latitude so now this will give me the latitude and this will give me the longitude now what do i have in the latitude and longitude if i go back to info if i go back to gps info and now if i look at uh, latitude and longitude do you see this there is gps latitude reference northeast and these are my coordinates but these coordinates they are stored in a structure you notice it's a structure okay what does that mean it is i have three values it's an array of three values it starts with one two three 
Now, you need to convert this to the proper, there are two different formats of GPS data. It depends on, depends on what you are using, how are you using it, okay? So from this, you can convert uh, to the other format and vice versa, okay? But I wanted to access those three values. So if I go back, here's my latitude structure, here's my longitude structure. What do I do? I come. I start with a string, all right? I start with a string. What does the string does? This string says, give me latitude one, first value in the latitude. And second, okay, there's a problem here. <laughs> this should be the second value of the latitude. I'm glad I caught it. And this is the third value of the latitude, the second value, and this third value of latitude. Uh, Let's do. So give me the first element, second element, third element, and this one's first element, second element, and third element. Put them all together in a string. This is called a string, okay? I'm defining a variable called a string, and I'm concatenating all these values together. We're putting them all together in one variable. And so latitude string, longitude string. Here you just print it out. I'm printing out the different values. You don't have to do this, by the way. Um, you don't need to print it, but I'm printing it just uh, for my own sake, the, just so I see I'm getting the data. But this is the important part. This says, I've created a table. This table has an index. So this index is the same index as the image index, one, two, three, four. I want to change that row with the following information. The image name, the latitude string, and the longitude string. All right, that's it. Now all I have to do, run it, and it depends on how many images. So this, if you don't want to see any printing, here happens, you don't need this part. All you do is that you come in this part, you come in this part, and then run it again. I'll clear, clear the window so you can see. Right click and clear, yes, I wanna clear it. Now if I run it, nothing, you're not showing any result. Where is your result? Your result is in here. What I expect to see is that table T. Do you see that? Double click on it, and now I got my image name, I got my latitude, and I got my longitude. These image names refer to what? Refers to the, this, uh, this information referred to that image. This information referred to that image and so forth. Now you can export this to an Excel sheet or you can export it, copy it to a file, but you got your data. All right, hopefully, I hope that you find this useful. I think uh, it, it helps a lot of people that are doing research, doing uh, PhDs, whatever, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find it very useful. All right? Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.